Let's talk about education and the security implications following the release of the WASI results recently. Tonight or this afternoon, security analyst Dr. Adam Bona says the huge number of senior high school students who failed to obtain the university admission cutoff point C6 in the 2021 West Africa Senior Secondary Certificate Examination is a worrying situation and not just that a time bomb waiting to explode his comment follows revelations in data released wednesday by waek which showed nearly half of all candidates who sat for the examinations failed in core mathematics english language and those candidates will not be able to gain admission to the university and other institutions of higher learning due to their poor grades in the two main core subjects so as many as 204,831 out of the 446,352 candidates who sat for the examinations this year scored above C6. So 45.89% of them scored between D7 and F9 in mathematics, whilst 45.92% scored the same marks for English language. Well, I have the data as provided by WAEC uh, for us to go through it when it comes to the four main core subjects. I'm talking about English, core mathematics, integrated science, of course, social studies. And this spans from 2018 to 2021. So we'll start from 2018 as we have it on the screen now for English core math, integrated science and social studies. Let's compare the figures. And these are in percentages. For English, for instance, in 2018, we had 46.9%. Then core math, we had 38.3%. Integrated science had 50.5%. And then for social studies, 73.3%. That's the percentage in terms of performance. That's how it looks like. Then we get to 2019. For English, that's 49.0%. That's where we are. Core math, we're at 65.3%. Integrated science, 63.2%. Relatively better. And then in 2021, we have 75.4%. Now, let's look at 2020. For English, it's 57.3%. For core math, 65.7%. Then integrated science, 52.5%. Social studies, it's at 64.3%. I hope you're tabulating and looking at uh, the disparities in the figures and the trend from 2018 to 2021. Now, let's come to this year. Recently released figures. For English, we have 54.1%. Core math, also 54.1%. That's a competition between English and core mathematics. For integrated science, it's 65.7%. Then social studies... 66 percent that's how it looks like in terms of uh, the core mathematics subjects and the percentages from 2018 all the way to 2019 that's where we are so this are the comparative figures when it comes to our core mathematics subjects english core math integrated science and social studies and these are verifiable figures as put out by WAEC. so to be admitted to any program in any university in ghana a senior high school graduate must possess at least credits A1 to C6 in core mathematics, English language, integrated science and social studies. That's basic, very important. Any of you who attended uh, the GES system or the West Africa senior high school know that this is what you need is the integrated science, core math and then social studies and then English language, basic. So the situation is compounded by the recent elevation of other tertiary institutions, which would have otherwise absorbed those who did not make it to the university. We know about the polytechnics now, the technical universities, the colleges of education, and other institutions such as the Ghana Institute of Journalism, NAFTI, etc. That's not to say that you don't need to pass to be able to go into uh, these schools. But of course, these were the alternatives if you do not get to go to the uh, university, so to speak. But they've all been elevated in status and also have an admission cutoff point of C6. So then what happens to these students who do not make it? Security analyst Adam Bona describes the situation as a time bomb waiting to explode and called for something urgent to happen. He will join me uh, in the studio shortly 
for this conversation. But before that, though, let's hear from the executive director for the education think tank, Africa Education Watch, Kofi Asari, who spoke on the failures in math and English especially. Math is an issue right from basic. Um, our issues with math is primarily due to the way math is taught from the basic level. Math is taught to be a mystical subject. We haven't yet been able to unmask or demystify the teaching of mathematics. It is still perceived by many students at the basic level as a difficult subject. And um, so you wouldn't expect that to quickly, you know, do a 360 when you get to secondary level. It is actually a tradition from basic. If we um, are able to demystify the teaching of mass, change the approach, mass teachers adapt in teaching mathematics and make it more participatory, make it more learner friendly, um, I'm sure people will be more interested in doing mass and then, and then learning mass much, as much as the other subjects. Um, so that is the issue with mass. With English, you know that as we speak at the primary level, less than 20% of students who are completing primary six, you know, have proficiency levels in English at the minimum. And the biggest challenge in our education sector is actually literacy and numeracy rates, especially um, for English. So um, I would say that the pass rate in Wasi English is actually an improvement on what we normally observe during the national or piloted you know, um, standardized tests at the basic level. But we have a lot of work to do um, in, in, in enhancing literacy. Uh, government has in role out some quality interventions in the area of um, teaching and learning English and mathematics uh, with the aim of trying to build foundational skills in math and English. I'm sure if those interventions are implemented thoroughly, we should see uh, more enthusiasm and more interest and also quality learning outcomes coming out of math and English at the secondary level in the near future. And that's the interaction uh, there from the Educa Africa Education Watch with my colleague Aisha Ibrahim yesterday here on the poll. So there are security implications. We've been talking about the implication on education, social status, amongst others. But I bet you do know that there is a security implication for this, considering the number of students who will not be able to make it uh, into uh, the tertiary level or uh, to be able to get access to tertiary education, knowing that uh, the, the data I've provided earlier also we know that some of these other alternative universities have all been elevated. And so if you don't have a cutoff, they have a cutoff point of C6. So if you do not get it, uh, what will happen to the over 200,000 students who will not be able to make it? I've been joined in the studio by Dr. Adam Bona. He's a security analyst. We're grateful for your time here on The Pulse. And congratulations on your new status. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It was a struggle. Yeah. Yes. But it paid off. Yes, yes, it? yes, Maybe you have to show us the way as well. I will. And I was asking <laughs> earlier about the secrets in uh, the good looks. Uh, if you seem to grow. Well, I think a, lo a, a lot of exercise and trying to eat uh, well. Okay. You know, you're not eating too much of the junk. Mm, that's like. a challenge. We'll see. We'll see how we'll keep and up. And sleeping well and working hard. The sleeping well part. <laughs> but it's fine. Let's talk about security because as key members of the security desk here are joining us, we're very interested knowing that these number of people will be churned out and they will not have access to tertiary education. What happens to them? What's the security implication of this? Oh, the security implication, very dire. I'm sure those who probably came up with the cutoff points, you know, where you get between C1, or A1 mm -hmm. to C6, C6. Uh, didn't probably envisage, we we'll get to a point where majority of the young people, or they didn't also envisage where we we'll get to a point where there'll be free senior high school. That way, those who probably would have gone into most of these TVET institutions, everybody is, you know, uh, streaming past and trying to enter the regular uh, senior high school. And so, for me, if you go into our prisons facilities, the statistics at the prisons will tell you that we, are, we have more young people in these prisons than we, you know, ever have had mm. in the history of this country. Mm. More young people, if you check with the, the, the prison service, you have children, literally, I mean, teenagers between you know, 17, 18 to 25, majority of these people are languishing in jail. Why? 
Because then if you have a situation where about almost 50% of your graduates from these uh, secondary okay. schools cannot, you know, uh, proceed to uh, either get employed or further their education, then chances are that they would have to engage themselves in other social vices, criminality, selling drugs, you know, other vices that will send them to prison. And we are likely going to be seeing irregular migration. Mm. If you look at those who go through the Sahel, who go through the desert, go through Libya, go through to, you know, uh, you know Italy and are crossing, these are literally young people uh, between this age bracket you are talking about. Mm. And so it is that I would have wished that someone would have thought of this and find, you know, space for these uh, young people. But what are they going to be doing? they not find space, someone thought about it, found space and expanded education at the level of um, SHS? Is it that you're saying they should have found, they should have thought about expanding it at the tertiary level as well? But at this point, that's the, the defense for that is that we've expanded it, given them access to education at the secondary level. So if you fail, how then do you blame the states again for your own failure? Well, you blame the states because even with those who have passed, Ask any student who, most of the students who have done, who have gotten the A1, mm -hmm. A1 to C6, C6, and they will tell you that getting into the regular university is difficult. Mm. So somebody really didn't think about it. Meanwhile, if you go into certain sectors, like construction, I mean, uh, masons, those who are fixing, you know, the acoustics, those who are fixing, you know, towels and all that, they make a lot of money. But you see, go into our secondary schools or go into construction sites and you would be surprised to realize that most of the artisans there are coming from neighboring countries mm -hmm. because we have not trained and educated our young people to realize that usually these white collar jobs, you go to a secondary school, you go to the university, they don't pay as much as you know, being handy and doing handy it's jobs. It's not because those coming from neighboring countries are more reliable, like you've heard people No, say. it has to do with training. Okay. How much investment have we put into TVET education? And so you have almost 50% of these young people who some of them unfortunately would end up becoming criminals. Some of them, excuse me to say, becoming prostitutes. Some of them, you know, taking the long journey of, you know, migrating to Italy through the desert. And some of them becoming destitutes, you know, this is the reality. And so mine is that the Minister of Labor, the Minister of National Security, this should be a core, you know, a cause for concern for the leadership of this country. Because if out of how many, let's say 200, 200 and something, 50% of them cannot move on because of some technicalities you put in their way. You know, for me, I wasn't, I didn't, I won't say I didn't like mathematics, but I, I had to manage to get credit to be able to move on to do my A-levels and all that. But you see, it's, you're, you're measuring somebody's ability to do well shouldn't be, you know, premise on, you know, mathematics and what do you call it, English. But that is what is going on. So as far as I'm concerned, the security challenges. So between now and the time the next badge of senior secondary school students write their exams. We should be thinking about what, how do we fix these people? Are we going to be giving them some incentives? Are we going to be retraining them? Because, excuse me to say, it was, we, I think the senior high school is three years. They've yeah. spent three years. If these people have gone to learn some electric house, have gone, you know how they would have helped develop this country. Mm -hmm. And so I think our surest bet into getting these young people out of trouble would be to ensure that Probably the government, I don't know how they can get all these young people, majority of them, go into these TV, edu you know, educational facilities, get them trained so that they can be... Do we have enough of these facilities? Even if we don't have any, we, are we... I don't think the advocacy, the education is strong enough to let these people... There should be a national policy to say, all these young people, let's place them in various TV. We, if we are not able to place all of them, well, I think there are these e-blocks they can convert into, what do you call a TVET, uh, you know, educational facilities. But at the moment, what is staring at us and where we find ourselves in, in the sub-region, 
where you have terrorism, extremists, and radicalism, and all that. And you can see just this issue about e levy people are ready. Demo it's just the smallest trigger. And so, mine is that when people have hope, those who have finished universities, there is that hope that one day you might find a job. Yeah. But you are in between the university, you have failed according to YX standards or accreditation, national accreditation standards. So you cannot proceed. What do you, what happens to you? So for me, because we haven't looked at it that well, we should begin to look at it. It doesn't look to, like yes. we have a plan. No, we don't have a plan. Mm. Because if we did, before the publication of this results, uh, somebody from the Ghana Education Service would have sat down with YEC, would have sat down with TVET, you know, uh, educational facilities to say, Okay, those who didn't make the cutoff point for investors, so the regular investors, we are going to be placing you here if it means feeding them and making sure that they can come out with, you know, some handiwork. I think that will do, but we haven't done that, not and, at all. And, and I've heard you describe it as a, a ticking time bomb. Uh, like every bomb as a security person, of course, there's a way of uh, detonating it and amongst others. Which level are we with this particular bomb? And um, how are we able to make it or disengage it? Oh, we, 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 are, we, are, we are actually, if it is level three, we're on level three. Oh. It is not to scare anybody. Because you have, if you look at the issue of, is it NAPCO, uh, this nation builders mm -hmm. thing, you know, some, those who just finished were supposed to go home and they were called back. Investor students, some of them have finished many years and they are waiting. So if you look at the backlog of those who are probably called them uh, more educated, and those who are semi-educated, and those who are not educated, put together. If that is not inflammable enough, then what are you waiting for? Because if, if you look at what has happened in other places, then one will say, we need a quick fix. We need a short-term solution, a medium-term solution, and a long-term solution. We're supposed to have all these one district, one factories. If these factories were, you know, functioning the way one was suspecting, one would say maybe they would have employed about a million of these young people, two million of these young people. But as we said, uh, I'm yet to know if they, I don't know any young person who is working. It doesn't mean they are, they, they are, they fa these factories are not functioning. So it, we are the last level. We are told 150,000 jobs have been created out of the 1D1F, at least. That's the latest figures that we are getting. From 2018 to 2020. If it is true, then that is, you know, commendable. But my point is that uh, if, if how many, out of how many young people who want to be employed, out of how many, if, if you have, let's say, 2 million young people waiting to be employed, mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a number of them, you know, a few of them get employed, what about the others? And so we need to look at this. We find ourselves in, in a sub-region that is not so good. Yeah. You had the president... What was the name? Uh, I think in the Kofi Annan, you know, there's a forum yeah. going on there. Yeah. He said, I will, not, I will not change the constitution to do a third term. Do you understand me? Because in the sub-region, we know what has happened. And so mine is that we find ourselves in a very volatile, uh, you know, uh, sub-region that should call for the leaders of this country finding a more pragmatic, you know, solutions to... Uh, this youth unemployment and, you know, this wike. For me, it worries me where you say someone's inability to get C6. The person is not good enough to probably go to a university. And those who have, I have a nephew who, a niece, who did science. Mm -hmm. And she had, I think, aggregate 15. And I'm told that she cannot do medicine. I'm told that she cannot even be a physician assistant. She can't do that program. She can't do all of this, but she can do something else. Mm. Yes. And so all of these people, chances are that might end up you not know, probably going to school. Mm -hmm. So what happens? And so uh, when, when probably that much is lighted, then you have petrol to, you know. So I think that our leaders should learn from what has happened you know, in terms of uh, antecedents from other places, and ensure that uh, they find a solution to this why canker. Because for me, about half of all, you know, uh, why, you know, those who start these exams 
will not go to the regular university. Okay. And but their polytechnics have all been transformed into, into something, else, into something yeah. else. Mm. But I see that you are proposing that all these, or those who have failed, should at least, in the interim, be taken to, through technical training, maybe TVET schooling, among others. But let's talk about these young adults themselves your niece included, she wants to do this. She doesn't want to do technical you know, training, for instance, because of the perception that you go to school and then you're going to be a carpenter, you're going to be an artisan amongst others. So these young adults themselves, are they prepared to go through this technical training that you're proposing? It's because the adults, the, the adult population of this country have failed the young people. We, we should have prepared some of this old school carpenters to be successful enough. Mm. The reason why somebody would want to read the news like MFA is because MFA is very successful in what she does. So you would be an inspiration for someone to aspire to go to GIJ or go to a school of uh, public whatever communication to go and do journalism and do it well. So that one day when you transition, that person takes over. But do you know any carpenter that has been successful in this country? Mm, a few. A few. And so mine is that we have not prepared the minds of these young people to want to go into, you know, artisanship, uh, learn masonry. We have not formalized this type of training and formalized this type of, uh, you know, skills. Mm. If we do that, then it will be easy for my niece to say, if I become a mason, if I become a tiler, I would get about 80 Ghana cities a day for doing tiling work. Yeah. If I became a doctor, recently we were told mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, university lecturers are getting paid uh, about 3,000 Ghana cities, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. You go to school, uh, the way I suffered before <laughs> I, I graduated, <laughs> then when you are done, you have to go and teach at maybe the university, uh -huh. they throw, 3,000, 5,000 Ghana city at you. If you learned to be an artisan for a year, you get more money than these people. Have we oriented these young people? The orientation is everybody is wearing suit. Everybody is wearing nicely dressed, yeah. dressing a nice car. Nobody wants to dirty his or her hands. If we can move away from, you know, this white color, perce you know, perceived jobs that don't exist to TVET trained, you know, uh, job-seeking applicants. You know what they are? I'll tell you that if you go to the construction field, you ask most contractors in this country. Ask everybody who is building a house. If you did, even if you needed a plumber. At the moment, my, pl my plumber is a Nigerian. Mm. My plumber is a Nigerian. Okay? The guys who will do your ceiling are from Togo. Yeah. So my point is that is someone not thinking out of the box and realizing that, yes, uh, you know, people are streaming in because they have seen the gap. And, you know, my thesis centered around the impact of what do you call it, immigration on security. We are not taking advantage of it. And so you have people coming in and taking the few jobs we have that are P, our young children would have gotten themselves employed in. And, you know, you mark them and say they failed. What does that mean? I don't believe that they failed. Mm. I just believe that the system has failed. You can't say these young people have, because you got D whatever or F whatever in mathematics, so uh, if you gave the person 100 Ghana cities, one city no to count, it. the person cannot <laughs> count. No. So the system had failed them. We've built a 12, uh, you know, lane highway. It's a 12 lane highway, and everybody is driving. We put the children in this highway and they are speeding, and that lane, that's a six-lane highway merges into one. And so as they get there, I'm giving you this scenario, as they get there, big brother is there, and he said, I am a you look very nice, you can read the news, go through. <laughs> and I well, Dr. Adam, now you two go through. Mm. And then the rest of them, my family, everybody should wait. Mm. So those who would wait, who agitate? Yeah. And when you give them petrol, they burn everything. Mm. Well, that's interesting. So uh, this, uh, the sense I get is that this could be a serious national security yes. implication, that it could have implications for our national security. But do you get a sense that anybody gets it, that this is a national security situation? Well, 
I want to think so. I want to think so that someone who is reading in between the lines, uh, Honorable Kandapa, the Labour Minister, and you know all those who are in charge, even the President himself, who run this country, are going to ensure that uh, they begin to, the Minister of Education, who seem to be uh, also trying to do a lot more in the area of education, would call the attention of these TVET institutions and say, how can we get all these young people who you are claiming they failed into these institutions? Let's give them one year. For me, it's a stopgap measure. How do we fix them in so that they don't become, you know, that ticking bomb? Because at the moment, how many of them wrote the exams? Two, two hundred and... Uh, Four hundred and something 400. thousand. So, and then two hundred and half of them passed, actually. So the half of them are home. Failed. So that two hundred and something who are at home, what happens to them? Because first of all, we took them from their parents that would give them free senior high school education, which mm -hmm. is very good. Mm -hmm. So now they are with their parents. Their parents don't have jobs. They have to be employed. You say they failed. They cannot go to school. If they even pass, and chances are that you couldn't get in this year, you can get in the following year. But now they say you can't go. You failed mass and English. And some of them will tell you, mass and But they have the opportunity to rewrite. Well, to, if you say you have the opportunity, how many of them would, you were in school, you couldn't pass the exams. So yes, the opportunity is there. I wouldn't say they shouldn't. But mine is that whilst we create, we are trying, we create the opportunity for them to rewrite. That will not be the solution. The solution will not be, I just told you earlier on mm -hmm. that, those who have had C6 in math and English, most of them would also be home. Mm. Go to University of Ghana, how many students can they take? Have we seen any remarkable improvement at University of Ghana, KN? These are the big universities. So have we seen any remarkable in terms of infrastructure? No. Go to the polytechnics. It was just, uh, just change the names and, you know, we didn't add. So mine is that, yes, we have done something, but we need to sit. Mm. Are we even talking to the young people? Mm. It's a question I've been asking. Are we talking to the young people? Who is talking them, to them? Who is talking to the young people? Nobody seems to be talking to them. All we are doing is imposition, superimposition. We want you to do this. Instead of engaging them. Isn't that our culture? Well, I think we should move away from that culture. Now the young people who are children and daughters, sons, <laughs> they seem to know more than we do. True. And we are not engaging them on the things they already know. You see, we are not engaging them, eh? but they know everything. <laughs> but there are those who would say that the uh, opportunities or the other options that you are proposing, including the TVET, for those who have failed, is more like an encouragement for those in school to also not learn. Because once they fail, there will be a Dr. Adam Bonar to advocate for them or to, to be giving other uh, opportunities or options. What yeah, would you well, say to what, those? What about those who... Who did well, they learned mm. and, and they've passed. But you cannot go on. You know, university education is not free, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is not free. So, mm -hmm. your ability, I'm chairing a committee, one, and one of my committee members said, he went to Takrade, he's from one of the, he went to Takrade and met a young woman who was carrying pure water. And when he engaged this young woman, she spoke impeccable English. I said, ah, young woman. Why, why, which school did you go to? Said, I went to this. What grade did you get? Looks like you got everything like A's or something. So are you sure? I said, yes. So, okay, send me your results. Mm -hmm. And the young woman sent the results to this professor. This young woman is about finishing business school. There are several of them in this country who passed, but there was no avenue to continue. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Yes. And so mine is that, yes, we have that block who have also passed, and they can move on. Because we haven't motivated them enough to move on. I mean, I say TVET is a money-making machine. TVET yeah. is a money-making machine. If, if you're, the, you're under your you know, wash hand basin or your sink, you have had a broken pipe, and you call the plumber, and he came and he just has to fix the thing, he looks at it, and he tells you, I'm going to charge you this amount, of, and you are thinking, oh, this thing. <laughs> well, you, have done I'm it sure you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yet you can't do it. Yeah. They have to pay maybe 40, 50 CDs for him to go. It's a mocking, money making machine if we can reorient these young people instead of leaving them because it looks like the way we are going, the way we are going, if we are not very careful and things get out of hand, it will be very difficult mm. to, you know, try to put it together. And so, as far as I'm concerned, I'm 
Uh, it's a ticking bomb, and that bomb is, 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 is at the last leg. Because you can see uh, the state of hopelessness for these young people. Some are calling. I've had this grade. I don't even know whether I'm going to be admitted. Those who have failed, ask for them. They are not talking. And you see, when you are engaging people who are not talking, you everything don't, is in their everything head. Everything is in their head. So I think the, our authorities should begin to revise their notes and not think that uh, the, the average Ghanaian, as we say, is laid back. The day the average Ghanaian begins to say, no, I'm going to uh, take matters into my own hand, I think the, rev the rest of us who, who uh, don't have uh, the strength to run, it will be difficult for us to run. So we've got to be very careful, MFA. I'll leave you here. Dr. Adam Bona, we are indeed grateful uh, you. for your time today here on The Pulse. We've been looking at the security implications of these students who have failed their West Africa Senior Certificate Examinations and they are unable uh, to move forward because they failed in maths, that's the core maths, and English. Uh, so it's more like the end of the road for them. There's been a proposal for all of them uh, to be taken through TVET training. And uh, Dr. Adam Bona was with me here on The Pulse. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.